Over the past few years, Barstool Sports has more or less become an American institution where millions of sports fans and comedy lovers go to find their daily fix of something company founder Dave Portnoy likes to call sports smut. Dave originally created his company back in 2003 in Milton, Massachusetts as a print publication distributed to the Boston metropolitan area, offering gambling ads and fantasy sports suggestions as its bread and butter. But it didn't take long for the brand to expand and launch its own website in 2007. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Over the course of the next nine years, Dave would build the foundation of his business brick by brick until January 7th, 2016, when he announced an emergency press conference in Times Square to reveal that the investment advisory firm known as the Chernin Group had purchased a majority State Barstool. Following the acquisition, Dave continued to run the site while also retaining complete creative control over his baby, but there were a few changes afoot. Most importantly for our purposes here today, during that same press conference, Dave would reveal that Barstool was moving its headquarters from Milton to New York City as part of the deal. Where were they headed? Uh, just an little up and coming neighborhood known as Nomad, an area of Manhattan once known for its numerous wholesale stores along Broadway, but now it's become a hotbed for luxury condo buildings. During 2016, Barstool Sports moved into 15 West 27th Street, leasing a unit that was just under 6,000 square feet large. One year later, they'd nearly double their office space by leasing the entire second floor of the building, bringing their grand total square footage to 11,800. At the time of the announcement, the building's owner, the Kaufman Organization, released a statement that read, We are excited that Barstool Sports is continuing to grow as they are the ideal tenant for our loft styles spaces and bring a youthful and fun vibe to the building. To be honest, that last part is probably something of an understatement because based upon the information that we were able to uncover about their headquarters, I'm not sure that the people who work at Barstool are ever doing anything other than having the time of their lives. Best look we've ever had of behind the scenes inside Barstool Sports headquarters comes courtesy of a drone tour they uploaded online a couple of years ago. At the time, Dave's right-hand man, Frankie Borelli had discovered a video detailing the inner workings of a local bowling alley with a drone effortlessly floating in and around the patrons of the venue like some sort of ballet dancer gliding across the stage. Once Frankie figured out that Jay Christensen, who runs Jaybird Films, shot that footage, he instinctively knew that he needed to get this dude into Barstool to do the same for their headquarters. And that's exactly what happened, with Jay capturing the entirety of this massive space in just one take. For starters, the Barstool headquarters is located right across the street from what was a gourmet deli and pizza spot that's more or less perfect synergy considering how Dave David made a name for himself off of his one bite pizza rankings. Once you're inside of the organization's second story office space, you'll discover their very recognizable branding draped across the walls, not to mention a whole bunch of debris littering nearly the entirety of the office floor. One of the first major studio sets you'll come across is where the hit podcast series Lowering the Bar is shot, a space that provides just enough room for its hosts to sit at the bar and enjoy weird food and drink combinations that very might well leave them gagging. A short hop from there is an entertainment room and gathering space known as the Gambling Cave, where employees can commune to watch whatever game is currently on TV and commiserate when they inevitably lose a boatload of cash. And because lighting cash on fire can be such hunger inducing work, located right next door to that is a kitchen galley with a little bit of everything, including an indoor grill. I really just hope someone turned off the building's smoke detectors before switching that on. Down the hall is Barstool's control center and editing suite, a room jam packed with not only top of the line computers and office furniture, but what I assume are some of the busiest working people in the building, thanks to the large amount of content Barstool churns out on a daily basis. For instance, juxtapose how busy everyone inside that room looks with how relatively not busy the folks just outside of there are in the nearby cubicle space. To be fair, even over in the KFC radio podcast studio, they're more worried about goofing around than getting down to work. 
I just hope they choreograph their little action scene properly because this recording space is flooded. Desks, chairs, and enough equipment that's bound to hurt someone if they aren't being careful. Located right next door to that recording suite is that Barstool Snapchat studio that's been painted in an all-encompassing shade of blue that personally reminds me something out of Dr. Seuss. And just in case some content at Barstool needs a more adaptive space, they've also got a green screen studio that can be repurposed in a pinch for whatever they need to film at a moment's notice. But perhaps no single spot in the headquarters is quite as impossible to move around in as the part in my take recording studio. Seriously, I don't know how anyone in here takes a step without stubbing their toe on something. Or how they manage to get a drone to fly around in here without crashing. From the busiest looking space to the spark, the Yak Podcast houses its recording studio in a glass office big enough for half a dozen leather chairs and the exact same number of goofball hosts to fill them. A stone's throw away from there or maybe a frisbee throw, whatever they like to toss around in a workspace this big, is the Chicks in the Office Podcast studio, which sure, might not look any bigger than a walk-in closet, but it's also easily the neatest and best looking of all the studio spaces we've seen here. On the far side of the second floor is the bullpen, where writers and researchers can throw on their headphones and get all the necessary day-to-day -day work out of the way. But at least employees relegated to this far corner get to be regularly entertained by watching Barstool's countless media personalities film content in the nearby faux basement studio setup, known as The Rundown. Over here, you also aren't too far from Dave's very own office, which is set into the wall nearby. It's probably a bit smaller than you might think, but it's got everything that he needs to keep up to date with everything, including, of course, a computer and a television to keep track of his bets. And if you're ever lucky enough to get a tour of the office for yourself, you can stop by the receptionist desk where you can pick up a few Barstool Sports swag items on your way out the door. Although whether or not you can actually book such a tour is something of a question mark. I mean, I suppose you could try showing up and asking for a look around, but in all likelihood, you would simply be shown to the elevators as quickly as possible. The only surefire way to get an invite that I could find is when Dave teams with an organization like Zaki's to auction off a Barstool Sports experience that saw one lucky fan get a tour of the entire building while also accompanying Dave on a pizza review. For those of you curious, that contest was from 2021 and the winning bid ended up being $70,000. So there's a pretty good chance that most of us will never be able to afford the opportunity to see this place in person for ourselves. But at least you have this tour and Barstool's endless supply of content to get a better sense of what it must feel like to work at one of the world's most popular entertainment and sports media. Media brands. All right, everyone, that'll bring this special studio tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. If there was one media company in the world you could work for, which would it be? I guess I already work for a media company. That doesn't apply to me, but I would love to read your answers down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name is Kara. Be sure to follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another one. Bye.